Hey guys, we're here for the last day this week of yoga class. Uh, thank you for helping me stay sane during a very stressful time. Being able to work with you allows me to just share information that hopefully you can use, work on yourself. If you want to watch these videos after the fact, they're here on my Facebook business page. They're also on our YouTube channel. I have them cut into smaller portions on YouTube and then the full video with a different audio source. So you can go back and watch these at any time. If you want to share them with friends, family, loved ones, clients, colleagues, whatever, feel free. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the side body and I also wanted to talk about balance poses. Something we hadn't really focused on uh, very much in the previous classes. I usually kind of, you know, wind in and out of, uh, of different things over time, just trying you know, uh, testing your edges. Like, what are you good at? What are you not so good at? I just work with that to be able to create a situation where people have something they can use and something they can use consistently. As always, if you have questions for me after the fact, just contact me and let me know. I'm happy to work with you. I'm probably going to get on Zoom here shortly and start doing um, individual trainings. If any of you are interested in that, just let me know. I don't have any prices uh, organized for that yet. I just want to add as much online education as I can. We were already pushing online very heavily, but during this, of course, it's even more mandatory in a sense. So, um, side body. We get a chance to talk about um, peroneals in the lower leg. We get a chance to talk about vastus, lateralis, and IT band, gluteus medius that we've already covered a little bit of, um, some of my favorites which are serratus anterior, uh, through here, through portions of the rotator cuff, and then also into the side of the neck, uh, into the suboccipitals. There's a little more to the back, but you get an idea. Some of the really important ones, I think uh, vastus lateralis, the peroneals, are often overlooked. They're not really dealt with heavily. So I want to be able to show you how to work on some of that. Just like we have in previous classes, you can improvise tools. If you don't have a foam roller, take a couple of blankets. You can tightly roll up. That will approximate the pressure. Not exactly the same, but close. And feel free to play with pillows, cushions, bolsters, uh, whatever you have available to be able to do that. If you have a tennis ball, that's great. If you have a towel or maybe a belt, uh, that's going to help in addition. I want you to feel like you can you know, run upstairs and grab whatever you need to be able to use it. I also, again, have a couple of blankets that I can use for various positioning, propping, uh, depending on what I need. But we'll go ahead and get started. You guys go ahead and slide off your shoes and get ready. I'm going to take mine off as well. And I want to make sure that my audio source is doing what it's supposed to, I believe it is. Yeah. So from here, we're going to line up again at the front of the mat, just like we have in every class in the beginning in Mountain Pose. Oh. And instead of holding position, I just want to wave my arms around, shake it out side to side, allow the arms to hang and swing side to side. It's warming up the joints, moving synovial fluid around, getting used to movement, especially if we're cold. In other words, we're not, we haven't been very mobile, we haven't moved around, we've been sitting on the couch or laying down watching Netflix all day. Just a little bit of movement. I'm going to lift the arms up overhead, make little circles, mobilizing through the head, neck, and shoulders, affecting the shoulder blades. Back and forth opening the shoulder blades. I have a lot of tension in my own body in this upper thoracic into my cervical spine because that car accident years ago. So I'm always sort of warming this area and opening it up, moving it around. I'm going to have good position with my feet, hips width distance apart, parallel lines, second toe to heel. I'm going to open up the hamstrings. 
walk it out side to side, back and forth. I'm not even going in as deeply as I could. <clears throat> it feels good on my sacrum right here, good in my low back to be able to put my forearms on my thigh. <sighs> Shake it out. No tension. Moving through the joints. Moving position. Being able to mobilize and work just around your physical edges. And slowly I'll stand back up. And arms again. Just opening it up. Getting some movement. Don't feel stuck in place. Move around. Those photos in yoga journal, those people are moving. I know it looks like they're static, but yoga is never static. You move in the stillness. So, <clears throat> on to and swan dive again, down and forward. Walk it out, left to right, back and forth. I'm going <clears> to <throat> bring myself down. And just like we did at the end of every class, we had our legs crossed. I feel a little tightness in my left hip here. I'm just moving around side to side. I want to feel my spine as I'm mobilizing these vertebrae. It's very easy for me to physically, uh, conceptually have a map in my head of like what my spine is doing as I'm doing this. If you're a massage therapist or body worker, what do you think it looks like when the spine is moving around like this? Conceptualize those vertebrae and what you feel with muscle attachments along the spine. I'm going to cross the legs. In my case, the left foot is forward. Uh, in front of the right, and I want to be able to shake any of the tension out in my hips. I want to gently roll forward. I get a nice little stretch right into my gluteals, right around the sacrum, right through here. I'm going to put my forearms out on my thigh. I can put it midway, I can put it closer to the knee, and I'm going to lean down and forward to put a little pressure it's like it's pushing my knees out and down, using this little area through my thigh. If you feel like your forearm is too sharp, you can always put a towel down over your thighs to dampen that pressure or a blanket. I want to be able to round my spine forward gently, allow my head and neck to fall. And I want to breathe through this. What happens if I shimmy side to side? through the hips, through the low back. If you find a good spot, it feels like I'm gently pushing my right foot down to twist my body this way. I get this nice stretch around my sacrum, out to my hip, refers just a little bit out to the outside of my leg, that lateral sort of IT band, vastus lateralis. And then the opposite side. I don't feel nearly as much tension here. And I don't make any judgment there, I just notice what I feel. I'm going to sit back, palms back, I'm going to open up the hands and palms and wrists. Walking side to side, moving my hand and palm around. Little bit of stretch, little bit of movement through there. If I find a comfortable spot, I'm going to walk the heels and the hands a little bit closer to me. And I'm going to do a gentle back bend, opening the shoulder blades, rolling the head and neck back. Right through there. Open the chest. Breathe. And just like before, but now I'm going to do this from a seated position. I want to see what the difference is. What do I feel through my hips? Side to side, back and forth opening the body. I'm going to switch my legs now. Opposite side. You might feel that you're a little tighter on one side or the other. 
And for me, I still feel a little more tightness on this right side for whatever reason. I'm going to lean forward. Again, forearms right through the thigh. Leaning forward, rounding the head out, forward, and down. Try to let the head hang down and forward. And slowly you come up, arms and shoulders again, open it up. What's the motion you have to make? What, what do you have to, to open up, to stretch, to lengthen? Any of this movement through those joints. We're trying to maintain mobility, exploring range of motion. In the end, I always want to feel comfortable, calm, secure, maybe content. You might say you have more equanimity. But what feels good? I feel more tension again in this left elbow, right in here. So I'm going to work on that guy for a second. Right in there. Shaking out the head and neck. Moving it around. Creating space. And big in breath. Arms up. As I exhale, I'm going to fall forward. When I can no longer comfortably work forward through my spine or my hips, I'm going to reach my arms down right there. Now I'm going to press the palms down and lift the forearm and chest. Big in breath. And as you exhale, bend your elbows and allow yourself to fall in comfortably. Now this stretch in my hips, in my gluteals, in my IT band, vastus lateralis, little intense. I can feel it down almost towards my knees, but I just want to explore that range for a moment. Let the head and neck fall with this. Now breathe deeply. Feel what it does to the vertebra, especially through your thoracic spine. The rib cage expands when the diaphragm pushes down on your abdominal organs. Ah. And slowly walk yourself up. You can walk around again, hands and palms, spreading the hands and wrists, working around, mobilizing through the carpals through the forearm flexors and extensors. I'm going to form a little bit of support so I can pull the heels in, having the hands and arms to balance on so I can open the shoulder blades and open the chest, head back. And forward again. I'm going to put the right arm down and reach the left arm up and over. I can kind of bend through this right arm, but it gives me a little bit of a foundation to touch and give me some support here. I'm going to reach up and over that side body, getting into latissimus dorsi, getting into the side body, probably a little bit of QL in the low back, opening the side. Can you let your head and neck fall over and get a little bit of scalenus medius? And opposite side, left hand will come down, doesn't matter how close or how far, you just want to feel like you have support, you know, reach up and over. And which side feels more tense to you, more tight or restricted? Breathe, big, long, opening the side body. I'm going to bring the legs out wide. I'm going to walk them out, shake them out, bending at the knee, creating space so it feels comfortable through the hips, feels comfortable through the knees, the ankles. I'm going to lean forward slowly, 
very tense, a little tight, right at the top of the adductors, right at the top of the hamstrings insertions into the ischial tuberosities. I'm going to lean down and forward. I think about right there. That's where I want to go today. I'm tight enough that that feels like a good stretch. I'm lifting up onto my fingertips. Now I want to try to move my shoulder blades on my thoracic spine. Just move them around. Mobilize. Big in breath. Long spine. Slowly fold down and in to the stretch of the hamstrings. If you want, you can pull the feet back towards the face. It's going to lengthen that back line down through the calves. It's going to open the feet if you spread the toes. Out the mouth. Ah. No tension. I'm going to walk myself back up. I'm going to shake out the legs again. I'm going to bring the feet together. Now, you can have the feet as far away or as close as you want. What feels comfortable to you? I don't want you to jam the knees, and I don't want you to jam the hips in a way that feels uncomfortable. In fact, what if you make little butterfly wings that are going to fly away? I feel a little tighter on this right hip, so I'm kind of managing that, kind of noticing what's going on right there. Just paying attention. Where do you feel tension? If I hook my fingers around my toes on the outside of my feet here, big in breath, lift and lengthen. It's going to give me some traction through the upper back. I had a little click, a little cavitation in the shoulder. Um, it popped as I lengthened it. Big in breath. As you exhale, squeeze the abdomen in. Roll down and forward on the exhale. Tuck the chin, round the spine. And slowly come up. If you have blankets and you don't have a foam roll, I want you to take those blankets and very tightly roll them up into a solid roll, probably about yay big. Maybe it's about as big as your thigh, if you can get away with that. I want to work into the side body, and for me, I have a lot of tension in my um, serratus anterior and also into my rotator cuff, and I want to work on some of this. Using a foam roll is a perfect way to access this area because it's firm enough to be able to access this side body where I couldn't really press extremely easily by reaching over on this side. What I will be able to do is go ahead and lean and turn my body weight to go down onto the foam roll. You can work on whichever side, left or right, doesn't really matter. I'm going to walk you through this. So serratus is right along the rib cage. If you reach your hand over, you're going to feel your shoulder blade. You're going to feel some muscles here. So first, I just want you to press on the ribs and reach your way up until you hit bone. That is the axillary border of your shoulder blade, right in here. Now, this muscle just below it that interdigitates with the abdominals is serratus anterior. Serratus anterior pulls the shoulder blade forward, so it's one of the muscles that we want to address. Beyond that, you've got your rotator cuff. And to learn more about the rotator cuff, when we used the tennis ball previously, we put some pressure into infraspinatus. Infraspinatus is one of those rotator cuff muscles. If you put your hand clearly on your shoulder blade, right back here, I want you to find a large muscle, feels kind of tight, feels kind of dense, and you let your arm hang by your side. Now, I want you to lift your arm like you were driving. Oh, that muscle pops up because as part of the rotator cuff, it's controlling rotation of the humerus, of this bone, rotation, rotator cuff, right? The rotator cuff gets a lot of work when we type, when we drive. Because of our position in gravity, anytime we reach out, stabilize. If we're massage therapists, 
we're using the rotator cuff to stabilize the head of the humerus while we deliver pressure with our forearm and elbow. So lots of massage therapists have very tight rotator cuffs. They have issues with their subscapularis, they have issues with the infraspinatus, they have issues with their teres group, which is a little bit more lateral, teres major and minor. We're gonna work on those. Now, if you didn't understand all that gobbledygook related to anatomy I just threw out, don't worry about it. <laughs> We're just working on muscles. I'm gonna walk you through piece by piece. So go ahead and grab your foam roll. If not, like I said, roll up your blankets really, really tight. I'm going to start on my right side because I'll be able to look at the camera and talk to you guys. I'm going to bring this guy down. And what I want to do is, I don't want to be in my floater ribs. I don't want to be down here. This area is more delicate. Um, this is where you could easily crack a rib if you're a boxer and you hit somebody, right? I want to go a little bit higher. So I want to go between the floater ribs and between the shoulder blade. This is still definitely on top of the rib cage, but we're definitely to the side. We're not to the front, and we're not to the back. Definitely in the side body. I'm gonna lean over. Ooh, tender. So for me, when I go into this position, I already feel like, woo, you know, tight, right? So this is more serratus anterior. I'm going to lean just a little further forward. I can use my hand and forearm to prop myself in whatever position feels best. If you do have a foam roll and it's really firm and you feel like this is too sharp, what you can do is put the towel over the foam roll and that's going to dampen the pressure. It's going to make it just a little bit more soft. Now, serratus anterior connects along the thoracic spine, along, well, I say along the thoracic spine, it's more along the thoracic rib cage, and then the muscles pull out to the shoulder blade. They tend to pull the shoulder blade forward. So what I'm gonna have you do is, if you grab the foam roll here, you've gotten a, a spot right in, ooh, right in serratus anterior. I'm gonna grab and I'm gonna pull myself this direction. So it's like I'm grabbing that muscle and pulling it to the back. So try to pull, oh, try to pull that open. Now I'm getting some referred pain up into the head of my humerus, up into the head of my shoulder, upper arm bone, pulling that guy forward. If I could take the pressure off with this other hand, I could do the same with this. It depends on what feels good to you. Now, I'm definitely not on the rotator cuff just yet. I'm definitely in serratus anterior. I'm definitely in the side. Could I go a little higher? Could I go a little bit lower? Sure. Where do you feel it? That's where I want you to work. What feels intense to you? So if I grab this, what happens if I roll it up or roll it down? I think I prefer up, right? Now, if I'm having problems with my head and neck, ah, I give myself a position right here. Now, could I do this and watch Netflix? Yes, especially if this is a problem. A lot of people will have shoulder pain. I know I did. Um, I have to think Daniel Omo. Daniel Omo made me much more aware of this area. Because it's harder to access on yourself unless you're using a tool like this, I've been having some sort of unrelenting shoulder pain for a long time that was related to my left side, which is my left serratus anterior. I'm going to pull myself oh, forward again, right there. She was able to work on that in sideline and really help me release some of the tension that had been going through there. The area felt very tense, dense. Um, I would almost describe it as feeling dead. It was just like the muscles had shut down and completely contracted instead of letting go. So from here, I'm going to take pressure off of anterior, serratus anterior, and I want to move into the teres group, teres major and minor. And I want to move into, we're getting the edge of subscapularis, but we're also getting the lats. 
Um, we're going to work maybe a little bit of the edge of infraspinatus. I'm going to roll down, and this is more underneath the arm. Oy, holy moly. So I'm going to roll back and forth. Oh, man. Wow. Now, you can see now I'm not on the rib cage. I'm on that axillary border of the shoulder blade. When I roll to the back, I'm going to get a little bit more infraspinatus. Holy moly. Huh. Huh. And if I need to rest the arm, I can put it on the foam roll, I can put it on the ground. That feels inordinately intense to me. I feel a line down the back of my arm running down. If I want to bring my arm over just so I can mobilize the head and neck while I deliver pressure. Oh, 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 oh yeah. This is almost too much for me, almost. Not quite, but almost. I had to rest my arm because when I lift it up and move it, the, the pressure is too intense. When I reach the arm up and over, I'm just supporting the head and neck, so I've got some support. I'm not straining my neck while I'm doing this. Roll forward, roll back. I'm going to put my arm in a different position. You can roll up and down. I'm using this left leg to push my body up and down slightly, right through there. A lot of people have problems in here. What they'll come in with is arm or shoulder pain. Whew, man, couldn't even do that, right? Oh, that's better. They'll come in with shoulder pain or arm pain, but they don't realize that some of the problem area is up around the head of the humerus. It's up around the rotator cuff. Um, students will ask me, for instance, for, can you give me a shoulder course? And I say, sure. It'll be 30 hours. And they're like, what? So what they want is just a little sequence just to work on shoulders. What they don't realize is if I'm adequately going to cover the entire shoulder joint, I have to cover all the muscles in the rotator cuff. And then not only addressing the muscles in the rotator cuff, I likely have to cover the shoulder blade and the muscular attachments around the shoulder blade because if you address the shoulder joint without addressing the position of the shoulder blade, I feel like the work is incomplete. So what did I just say? Oh, bodies are complex. You got a lot of muscles, that's all. So right here, I feel good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push to the back. Oy. As I go to the back, I feel like I'm hitting possibly right on the edge of infraspinatus. I'm gonna roll up and down just a little, I wanna go a little bit higher. Oh, right there. Oh, even trying to lift my arm, it was it like, it made that muscle pop up. It was so intense, I had to drop it. I'm gonna gently try to lift, gently try to lift. Oh, gently try to lift. Oh. Wow, that's tight. So to take pressure off of the rotator cuff, I'm gonna lift up, I'm gonna roll the foam roll back down into serratus again. Now this is much easier to take the second time, but I wanna see if I can go just a little bit deeper. I shifted my hips just a little bit lower, right in there, I'm gonna pull that over. Ooh. It's like I'm grabbing that skin and then tractioning it backwards behind me. I'm opening that up. Big and broad is the nature of the game. You can imagine if somebody went into your side like this with an elbow. Ow! Hey, sharp, sharp, sharp. I find in this area particularly, big and broad is definitely the way to go. And just to give my head and neck a break, I've got all these muscles contracted. I'm going to roll this guy up, and I'm going to use it like a pillow. Uh, now... I don't want to roll into the front of the neck because we want to avoid the carotid artery. But if we're rolling into the posterior, rolling into the back of the neck, or onto the side, I'm totally fine. The front of the neck, like finding your cardiac pulse, yeah. That's the front, we don't want to press there, but if you're on the side, you're going to be able to press. You can move the foam roll higher, you can move it lower. You're going to get into splenius capitis there at the top portion. That feels really good to me. I'm just rolling my head and neck around. 
find a good spot. I'm getting some referred pain up and around my ear, up into, it feels like the inside of my skull, almost behind my eye. Very common with splenius capitis. Breathe. Oh. It's easier to breathe here than it was earlier, especially on serratus anterior. Because when we're pressing into the rib cage, anytime we inhale, it's putting more pressure into our roll. <sighs> Gives the rest of my body a place to relax, to let go. further forward, a little bit further back. Where do you feel the tension? So long as you're not putting pressure in the front of the throat or along the carotid artery, anything to the side or the posterior cervical spine is totally fair game. I really like this foam roll because it usually conforms to the shape of my neck. Oh, it picks such a great spot. This big, broad pressure means that I'm able to receive this input into my nervous system. And my nervous system, to make a, a more scientific explanation very simple, it's like my body goes, hey, why are we holding that muscle so tight? Oh, let's go. You're just providing stimulus and inviting a response. Preferably that response is cessation of pain and it's relaxation. Feels good. Feels good to unwind. Good to let go. I'm gonna roll back and forth. Find a good spot. Oh, right in there. Oh. Ah. And I'm gonna check our time, see how much longer we got. Yeah, we're good. So we're going to do the opposite side. Again, serratus anterior and then up into the rotator cuff, building into the side of the neck. I'm going to turn my body around so you guys can still see me on this opposite side. And right in the rib cage, I'm going to roll myself up. I feel surprisingly less tense here in this area along the rib, rib cage. I'm not really hitting um, the shoulder blade. I'm definitely on the ribs. I'm grabbing over here. Here's my chest, but I'm right in the side. I'm gonna use both hands to pull me forward. Usually this is the direction people wanna go because they wanna pull the rib cage open. They wanna pull serratus anterior back. The serratus anterior pulls to the front. Oh. You can look up in Google, you can look up serratus anterior and look at GIFs, um, images of where serratus anterior has its origin and insertion, so you can develop a more clear picture of what's going on. You're hooking right in there. Oh, now when I roll back, that feels a little bit better to me. Right there. I'm going to roll up and down. Just pick a spot right, uh, right there. Now, I can still use this right hand to pull myself over. It actually feels better if I hang out in that one spot, just straight down. feeling a huge amount of sensation there right now, so I'm going to move into the rotator cuff. This has been a long-standing issue for me in this area, so I'm really interested to see how this is going to feel. Oh, 
So I'm definitely right on that axillary border. I'm trying to roll back and forth and find where is the, the tension at that I can pull into. If I roll a little bit posterior, I think right there. Oh. Now I can more, honestly, I can move this arm more than the other side. It doesn't feel as tender. I'm getting a little bit of like a cracking sort of uh, sensation of like tissue rubbing around in my shoulder joint, probably just from tight muscles and the press on this. And I'm gonna pull myself forward again or back. Which one do you prefer? I'm gonna use my other hand to support my head. That feels better. I can roll posterior, I can roll forward. We're hitting the teres major and minor. We're having some effect on subscapularis, which is underneath the shoulder blade. It goes back onto the rib cage again, thoracic spine, thoracic rib cage. I'm also hitting latissimus dorsi, and if I roll to the posterior, I'm hitting a little bit more of infraspinatus along the rotator cuff. Now, if I lift and move, oh, that was intense, right? If I rotate, turn the humerus, and I roll, ooh, I'm gonna go a little bit lower, roll in that guy, ooh, move that around. What feels good to you? What feels like you're accessing that area to open it up? This is opening up again, the upper body. Rotator cuff, shoulder blades, I'm gonna let that arm rest. I'm using my hand on this side just to take the pressure off of my neck because I'm lifted here. I wouldn't want to just hold my neck in a craned position for all that time. Uh, oh, uh, Moving yourself, a little bit up, a little bit down. Oh, I can actually lift my hips and roll on this guy as I go right up to the top right there. Oh, starts to feel like I'm almost at the top of the shoulder, at the shoulder joint. I get a little crackle, a little bit of like sinew, like there's some movement there in the shoulder, but I'm just gonna work on my own. I can pull myself forward, I can push myself back. I like to pull forward here. Right through there. I start to feel a little bit of strain on my neck. I'm gonna take a break on the rotator cuff and roll my shoulder above and have my tasty uh, yoga pillow right here. Uh. Now, I can roll the head forward to back. Working on the neck, I'm in the side and in the posterior. You can go higher up towards splenius capitis, towards the base of the skull. Where do you feel the tension? As long as you're in the side or in the posterior, you're completely fine. I'm hooking the hand around the foam roll here so I can pull myself forward. It, it's pulling that tissue back and open. I get referred pain again up and around my ear. It feels like through my temple towards my sphenoid. I feel it just behind my eye, it feels like lower here. Very common when you're putting pressure into splenius capitis. Breathe. You can close your eyes if that feels comfortable to you, just so you can pull through here, accessing that area. Ah. You're hitting trapezius, you're hitting splenius capitis, you're hitting uh, scalenus medius, 
you're hitting a levator scapula as you come up through this posterior section of the neck. Tons of layers, muscle there. Now I can move the foam roller higher, I can move it lower. What works best for you? What feels good? I moved a little bit lower. I wanted to roll posterior and pull through there. That feels good to me. Very deep pressure around, feels like C3 to C1. I feel some shifting in those vertebrae, some really profound pressure right in the frontal lobe, right up here, around the frontal bone. Feels almost like crazy, like sinus pressure up here from that. Feels intense, but not painful. It almost feels like a headache is coming on, just slightly right here. A lot of people, when they have headaches, uh, people were asking me earlier about migraines, cluster headaches, tension headaches. What we're really good at as massage therapists or yoga teachers is helping people with tension headaches. Sometimes tension headaches seem to go along with migraines. Migraines are more specifically a neurological condition. Though I have seen clients who tell me they have migraines and it turns out they're just having really vicious tension headaches. I'm poking into there and then pulling myself forward. Again, that little that pressure right into the frontal bone, but it started to dampen just a little bit, not quite as intense. I'm gonna turn my body and I'm going to put the back of my head on my pillow here. I'm going to roll side to side, taking the pressure off of that side body for a second, going right into the posterior. If you're doing this with a couple of towels, it might not be as firm. You can always take the tennis ball and put it on top of the towels to you know, get more specific pointed pressure. There's really no substitute for a good foam roll like this. I use foam rollers I pick up from OPTP. Um, I think this is called the Axis, if I remember. It's a, a black foam roller I pick up there from that company. OPTP, if you want to sponsor me, feel free to contact me. Oh, just working both sides. I'm going to slowly bring my body up. And I'm going to check where our camera is again, like how far along we are in our video. I'm going to restart this guy and check the time over here. We haven't worked the lower body and we haven't really done balance poses as of yet. But how much time do we have left? Oh wow, not a whole lot. So I'm going to go ahead and stand for a minute. I'm going to do some balance poses. I'm going to walk you through tree pose. Uh, tree pose is a very classic um, yoga pose a lot of people will see. <clears throat> And here's what I'm going to do. Instead of facing forward towards our mirror here, I'm going to face towards so, for, to you so you can see this. One, you see how I've got hips width distance between the feet. I've got parallel lines, second toe to heel. Um, I'm going to lean into my right leg, which means I'm going to lift the right kneecap. I'm going to squeeze the belly in. I'm going to gently engage my gluteals to tuck my tailbone just a little. Just some engagement. It doesn't feel like the muscles are squeezed. It just feels like they go, hey, let's offer some support here. I'm going to lean into this right leg, and my first order of business is just to lift and move this guy. Now, if all I can do is press the bottom of my foot along my ankle, totally fine. I'm scissoring my foot into my leg and pressing my leg into my foot. If you can go above the knee, feel fine. If you only have enough balance to do this and you keep stepping down and keep stepping down, totally fine. Listen, is this a balance pose? Yes. Yoga is about movement. Now, if I want to bring the foot above, can I press into the thigh above the knee, squeezing the foot into the leg, squeezing the leg into the foot. That's going to give you more stability. You can lift and lengthen. If you start to fall out, who cares? You're working on balance. These are really great for focus. And I start to feel a little tension on the right leg. 
especially through my arch, through my foot, through the muscles that cause stability around my ankle. I'm going to come back down in a mountain pose. I want to feel the difference in those legs. This guy feels tight. Like he was working, working, working. Now we're giving him a break. I'm going to lift the kneecap on this left leg. I'm going to engage and lengthen. I'm tucking the spine. I'm tucking very gently the tailbone, squeezing the abdomen in lightly, just an engagement, just to support this overall area. I'm going to lean into the left leg and bring my right foot out. Now, you don't want to do this right over the knee. If you're closer to the ankle, it's totally fine, but I want you to try to open the leg out. You're opening through the adductors. You're squeezing the foot into the leg and squeezing the leg into the foot. I'm going to lift this guy higher above the knee in my case. I'm going to squeeze in. And if I fall out, well, so what? That's what you're supposed to do. You're working on balance. Some days really great. Some days not so great. Sometimes you'll find that you can balance on one leg and not the other. So I'm going to push the guy in. I'm scissoring. I'm pressing the leg into the foot, pressing the foot into the leg. And if you've got enough balance, you can start to lift your arms go into the full expression of tree and lift your limbs up and out squeeze the belly in tuck the tailbone long spine lifting the shoulder blades find your balance squeeze the foot into the leg and leg into the foot slowly you can come out Now, just to play with another balance pose, I'm going to bring the right foot out. I'm going to lengthen this leg. I'm going to try this. I'm going to reach my arms out in front. I'm going to reach the left leg back for warrior three. I can point the left toes. I can try to lower the left hip down towards the ground. If you fall out, no worries. Lengthen the leg. Lengthen both legs, lift the body out, lengthen. I feel a good stretch in my hamstrings here, and I'm slowly going to come up, mountain pose, and then I'm going to switch sides. I'm not even doing a crazy step in. I'm lengthening the standing leg, lifting the kneecap, forming stability, and then I'm slowly reaching my body out. Pointing the right toes, reaching the body, squeeze the belly in, drop the right hip, lengthen the body out and long, and slowly. <sighs> now, I'm going to grab the foam roll again. I'm going to work this time on the outside of the leg. We're going to get just a little bit more into vastus lateralis and maybe briefly into the peroneals. We have a limited amount of time today, but we're going to see what we can do. I'm lifting that guy up onto my thigh. Oh, holy moly. So I'm sitting, but I'm really between the knee and the greater trochanter of my femur. I'm really on this outside, but this allows me to roll gently up and down. Where's the spot for you? For me, I feel like it's a little bit closer to the trochanter, a little bit higher, and then I'm gently going to pull myself over or push myself away and see which side, which direction. If I pull, that feels a little better to me. Now, I'm not really doing much to the IT band. I'm really trying to work vastus lateralis. Vastus lateralis is a large muscle along the quadriceps, along this lateral portion of the leg, right in there in the thigh. I feel some intense kind of referred sensation down towards my knee. And in my case, I'm going to lift this up and switch it. I'm going to go to the opposite. Again, rolling up and down. Feels a little more tight on this left side. I'm leaning forward this way to hook into that area. Breathe. Now, if I 
I have enough balance, I'm gonna play with this. I can balance with my right foot. Woo, what happens if I, oh, if I lift, hey, right in there. You'll notice that I'm not aggressively just rolling up and down the IT band. The IT band is mostly just connective tissue. It's not even really contractile. What I want to do is put a stimulus into my nervous system and allow vastus, lateralis, whatever tissue to relax, release, unwind. We put a stimulus in and we hope that relaxation is the response. I'm leaning further forward again because that feels good to me. And then I'm going to bring, bring my body down. I want to see about the outside of my lower leg along the peroneums, along the fibula. So you kick somebody in the shins, that's on their tibia. Right in here. If you decided to kick Donald Trump in the shins, right up in here. Not that I would encourage violence against the president, but right up in the shins right there, in the tibia. The fibula is on the inside. So you've got like your ulna. Your ulna is like the tibia. Your radius is like the fibula over here. It, it, it rotates a little bit more, a little bit more movement. People tend to break the fibula because it's a smaller um, bone. It's harder to break the tibia, typically. So what I'm going to do to apply pressure here is I'm going to bring my knee over, and I want to see if I can position myself to hook into that. Ooh. So I'm on this outside. If you could see, I'm, I'm right here in this area to deliver pressure in here. I'm, I'm using the foam roll. And then I'm going to lean. I'm going to see if I can stack my body. Oh, right. Oh, man. Now, I'm pretty mobile here. I could hook myself. Holy moly. Now, this is a little bit like pigeon pose. I'm getting a good stretch on my gluteals, but that's not the main focus. The main focus is right on the peroneals, the outside of the lower leg. If I want to press in there, oh, now I can roll down, I can roll up, Ooh a little bit lower, right there. Oh, if I want to roll up and down, I can, but I'm definitely more on the outside of the lower leg, right there. I'm using that left arm to reinforce. I'm going to start to move the foot around. This is very similar to what we do to the forearm, right? The forearm and the lower leg are just opposite sides of the body. Think about it. Upper arm, one bone. Upper leg, one bone. Lower arm, two bones. Lower leg, two bones. They're just mirror images on the opposite ends of the body. I'm moving that guy around. Holy moly. Now, I can reach lower, I can reach higher. Oh, as I go higher, right there. Wow, that's intense. Right in. Oh. Breathe. No tension in your head and neck. Oh. Oh. I'm going to slowly bring myself down. Man, that was intense. Wow. That area is really difficult because if I had to reach my hands over and pull, it's too much work from small structures. Being able to stack body weight to be able to access this um, through... Uh, my, my brain's going blank here. What is this? Um, <laughs> can't even remember. Um... Oh, interesting. Okay, well, I'll do the other side and think about it. What muscle is that? I say it all the time. I, I do a complete blank. So now I'm going to try on this left side. I'm still facing you guys so you can see this. Tibialis anterior. That's it. So I'm going to reach up. Oh, just like before. A little tighter, I think, on this side. I'm trying to stack my body weight right in. Oh, right in there. As I lean forward again, I'm really on the outside of the left leg. There's a little pressure in the hip, a little pressure in the IT band, but mainly this along here is the main pressure spot. 
If I pull myself forward, holy moly. Breathe. I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I think in my case that tip anterior, those peroneals, oh yeah. Ooh. Now, it's, it's been really nice because I can pull my forearm into my quads here along my adductors to kind of leverage the lower leg. As I press this way, the ankle comes up, but I can use this thigh to push it down. So it's like I'm taking a stick and pressing on both sides right into this guy to deliver pressure. But here's the deal, it doesn't hurt my hands. This is one of the things that massage therapists don't fundamentally understand about my work being mat-based is it's a much better way of leveraging pressure to be able to work on people and the issues they present. Hooking in right in there. And I'm gonna slowly bring myself down. Oh man, wow. I'm gonna bring myself up. I'm gonna check our cameras here, see where we're at. And I think I'm gonna bring you guys into Shavasana here. Yeah, let's go ahead and go into Shavasana. We're gonna end for today. Um, go ahead and just put your foam roll to the side. You're gonna bring your body down onto the mat. And I'll walk you through that final pose. You're gonna bring the back of your head. Uh, it's like a, a lift and pull away. Release any tension there in the neck. And then I'm going to press the back of the head down and tuck the shoulder blades down and away. Down and away a couple times. I'm going to lift the bottom up and out. And then extend the legs a little bit wider than hips width distance apart. Allow the shoulders, the hands, the palm to fall open. Wow, my legs feel so different, the lower leg. Breathe through your nose. Long, slow breaths. Scan your body for tension. Start at the feet. Work your way up joint by joint. If you're a massage therapist, if you're a yoga teacher and you know your anatomy, I want you to visualize all that anatomy as you work your way up the body. Visualize all of those muscle origin and insertions along the bone. Think about the complex anatomical structures that are there. My lower legs feel very invigorated, kind of open, awake, compared to normal. Relax your feet, relax your lower legs. Relax the fronts and backs of your thighs. Relax your hips and pelvis, relax your lumbar spine, your abdomen. Relax your intercostals, your thoracic spine, your shoulder blades, your chest open. Relax around the shoulder joint, down to the elbows and hands and carpals. Relax your neck, relax your jaw, relax your scalp. Through the jaw. Back just 
through the nose. Slowly, you can open your eyes. You're going to wiggle the fingers and toes, turning on to your right side, rolling up. Face forward again. <clears throat> Pull the flesh away from your body. Point your finger and thumb, connect. Backs and the hands rest on the thigh or on the knee. <clears throat> Long, open spine. Gently tuck the chin, retract just a little. I just want to feel those cervical vertebrae open up as my crown lifts up and out through the ceiling. Palms together, prayer position at your chest. Big in breath. And as you exhale, fold forward, honoring your practice this week, honoring your practice today, and namaste. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, we're going to take a break tomorrow, but I will see you on Monday. Again, likely 4 p.m., unless anything changes. I'm uh, probably going to keep this up for a little while. just depends on how long the quarantine continues. But again, it gives me something to do. Uh, it gives you something to uh, focus on so you can relax. Feel free to go over any of these in pieces on YouTube or on my Facebook page. You can use these repeatedly. And if you have friends, family, colleagues who'd appreciate it, to share with them. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys are staying safe and sane. One love. I'll see you guys soon.